Welcome to this week's edition of the St. Paul Podcast. I'm Peter Marty, Senior Pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church, located in the heart of Davenport, Iowa. Right here each week, you can hear a message to inspire your walk with God and hear beautiful music to fill your life. Let this podcast be your occasion to contemplate some of the deepest things in life, just as I hope it helps faith come alive for you. Most of us like to have clear heads when it comes to right and wrong in life. We know there's a distinction there. We want to be sharp-minded about that distinction. We want to be wise and principled and unequivocating. I suppose the same could be said with respect to other instincts we have about guilt versus sin or truth versus falsehood or good versus evil. The dividing line, we think, ought to be rather sharp and distinct between right and wrong and good and evil. But that's living in a pretty oversimplified world, for all of us face complex situations in our life when there are all kinds of pros and all kinds of cons that we simply have to weigh. There's ambiguity, in other words, as we make decisions in life and find our way. The good gets mixed in with the bad, and separating the two can be very complicated. It's even more complicated if we start talking about people in these ways and we have to size them up and choose to assess ourselves. Suddenly there seems a very real saint-like quality to each of us that's also all tangled up with a real sinner-like quality to each of us as well. We need to wrestle with this saint and sinner within us lest we start assuming that other people are full of all these bad traits, and we just happen to be full of all the good ones. Well, Matthew, the gospel writer, records a parable that Jesus told one day 
that sounds on the surface like it's a story of agriculture or farming, because it's about weeds that get all tangled up in otherwise very pure stalks of wheat out in some farmer's field. But as you will soon hear, this is a parable about so much more than farming. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. He said, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. Now, while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then disappeared. So when the plants came up and they bore grain, well, the weeds appeared as well. And the farmhands of that farmer, they came and they said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? The farmer answered, An enemy has done this. And the farmhands said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them up? But the farmer replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you will uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. So reads a story in the 13th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. Well, hear now a word about bad stuff that gets all tangled up in all kinds of good stuff. And then let's think together what we should do about this. Take a listen. Well, about every three or four weeks, in spring and in summer, my wife Susan and I have a remarkably similar conversation. She will purchase some flowers at the nursery and go outside and plant them in the front garden or the back garden or the side garden of our house. And then she'll invite me outside to see the beauty. And it's colorful. And they're just in the right place. And I affirm the loveliness of it all. Then she'll point at a nearby plant and she'll say to me, do you think that's a weed? And I will say, I really have no idea, which is the truth. But we walk around, we tromp through the foliage there, and it isn't long before I point to a plant. It's got little yellow flowers on it. And I say, honey, do you think that's a weed? And she says, I really don't have any idea, which, of course, is the truth. Well, this is not merely our gardening ignorance at work, though there's some of that it can be really hard to tell the difference between a plant and a weed. And the best gardeners in any community are not perfect at that science either. It's in part because some weeds are downright beautiful. You can have Queen Anne's lace cover a field and it just looks like a white embroidered tablecloth across the top of the grass. Some weeds are purposeful. There's dandelions and milkweeds that function with high purpose. But determining the difference between a plant and a weed is also difficult because what is a weed, except by definition, it is a plant that is in the wrong place at the wrong time. A soybean plant in the middle of a soybean field is a crop. A soybean plant in the middle of a cornfield, that is a weed. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no field in the world where you will ever find only grain. And there's no flower garden in the world that is only flowers. There will always be weeds. Always. When Yahweh speaks to Adam in the creation story and reminds Adam that he's going to be tilling the earth, Laboriously, God also says, well, guess what? There's going to be thorns and thistles that are going to keep popping up. So yeah, weeds are always present. And no matter how hard you try, they will always be there. You may not see any today, but check again tomorrow. And anybody in the herbicide industry will tell you just that. 
So today Jesus tells a parable, a story about a farmer who planted some seeds of wheat. But what he ends up with is a, a, a field where wheat and weeds are all commingled. They're all mixed together. We actually have a hymn in the church, and we're going to sing it in about 10 minutes. Come ye thankful people, come. With these words in it, all the world is God's own field. Fruit unto God's praise to yield. Wheat and tares, that's wheat and weeds. Wheat and weeds together sown unto joy or sorrow grown. That is not how the farmer planted his field. He put down good seed, not bad seed. And the farmhands wondered, how could this be? Where did these weeds come from? In his paranoia, the farmer says, well, there's an enemy that showed up in the middle of the night and with his bag of weed seeds, and he put them out there. But for the farmhand part, they just said, we're, we're going to deploy Operation Get Rid of the Weeds. Yeah, they offered then and there to rip out the nasty weeds, to which the farmer said, no. Let them be, you will end up ripping out a lot of good wheat in the process, and that's simply not worth it. Just wait until the harvest. Matthew, who puts this parable down, is clearly talking about more than just agriculture here. He seems to indicate that there's really two kinds of people in the world. There are weeds, and there are wheat. And isn't it interesting, but if you and I read the parable from that perspective, that there are two kinds of people in the world, how funny that we should so quickly identify with the wheat, the good ones. It's the other people who are the weeds. It's Lucy showing up in Charlie Brown's face and telling him to his nose, you are the crabgrass in my lawn of life. <laughs> Have you ever met an irritating person? Oh, sure you have. But in the last five days, have you met an irritating person? Someone of whom you want to say, but you don't have the words, this person is a weed. They are a thorn in your side. They are a thistle in creation. They're not your idea of fun. They're not your idea of goodness. And they don't fit into your idea of who is in and who should be out. So you want to purify your life. You just as soon excise them from your head. And you call it Operation Get Rid of the Weeds. Throw them out. Send them somewhere else. I don't want them in my backyard. I don't want them in the front yard of my brain. Have you ever looked at anybody in your life? Or in your community? Or in this nation? In that way? I think it can be a pretty easy default. And I struggle with it myself all the time. So I want to ask this morning, who am I? And I want to ask, who are you? Are you just this perfectly pure and golden stalk of wheat that's untainted by any hypocrisy, any sense of self-importance, any know-it-allism or arrogant certainty? I guess none of us should be too certain. Because according to the parable, the weeds are so entangled with the wheat, you often cannot tell them apart or get them separated. You may knew, know the words of the late Soviet dissident Alexander Solzhenitsyn. I've turned to them many times in my life, and I commend them to you again today if you don't know them. If only the world was as simple as evil people, somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds. Think of that guy sowing weed seeds in the middle of the night. If only that were, the world were that simple and it was necessary only to separate those evil people and destroy them. But, says Solzhenitsyn, the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. The world is a complicated place. And it is as complicated as the human heart. If only we could separate obvious right from obvious wrong, and perfect good from perfect bad. If only we could, could pull apart 
innocence from sin. But that's a tall order on so many days. And just think of different realms in life, if you would, for a moment. Think of artificial intelligence and robots. So magnificent on the one hand. These things work 24-7, these robots do, without needing a break. AI can think faster than the human brain. Yeah, and it helps execute boring and repetitive jobs. But look at the downside. You take away all these jobs from people, all kinds of livelihoods. You open the door to fraud and, and fakery and falsehood with AI. And of course, there's no emotion. Or science. If only it were easy to just discover and cherish the good and have not to deal with the bad. J. Robert Oppenheimer, the, the, the film guy of the weekend here, the father of the atomic bomb, was so proud of the achievement of this nuclear fusion that created the Hiroshima possibility. He was so proud of it. And when the Nagasaki bomb fell, he felt he had blood on his hands. He lived with shame for the rest of his life because now we could destroy ourselves. Or book bans and libraries. You know, the sense is if only could we could eliminate evil by removing certain books. But it doesn't work that way, of course. We just merely assuage the discomfort of some at the expense of other freedoms and learning. The world is as complicated as the human heart. And if only we could more easily separate this right from wrong, this bad from good, this e e evil, uh, this innocence from sin. Laws on the books which have the good intent of protecting a fetus, when they get carried to an extreme, we got problems. And in the Texas courtroom this week where these suffering women who experienced septic shock and had to carry to full term unviable babies with half a skull and half a brain because no doctor wanted to risk lifetime imprisonment. And the whole courtroom's weeping, including the Texas attorneys who are defending the case. Weeds can get so entangled with the wheat, it can be tough to separate, you know, the good from the bad. Think of chemotherapy, which some of you have first-hand experience. It is so good with modern science. It goes after those cancer cells. It gives you a life. But it also attacks good cells and destroys immune systems and wreaks havoc on the human body. I think of Western aid to Ukraine, which has been so impressive, humanitarian-wise and military-wise. The, the, the coming together of so many nations to support the people of Ukraine. And then we approve these cluster bombs, these morally reprehensible munitions that just explode and kill civilians, which most of the Western world finds abhorrent. I think of the Apostle Paul, just when we end up thinking we're doing good, we end up doing the bad we never intended to do. Weeds can get so entangled with the wheat because separating good motives from bad motives is painstaking and separating good decisions from bad decisions is arduously painful and difficult. If the truth be told, we're incapable of perfectly separating the wheat from the weeds or the weeds from the wheat, which may be why the farmer told his farmhands, don't you dare go out into that field believing that you can do that. But the farm man said, wait a minute. We need to take a stand. We need to stand up against evil running roughshod over good. To which the farmer says, no, let's concentrate on growing wheat. Hold back on trying to kill the weeds. Disentangling the weeds from the wheat, that's more than you can manage. And I'm not ready to lose the preciousness of the wheat for your zeal in getting rid of the weeds. There are some weeds in this life that make me furious. And there are other weeds that draw your ire and draw your rage. We want them out of our lives. 
But God will not uproot the very wheat with which we need to survive just to satisfy our rage and our fury over what we think is a weed. Even when we're confident, that's a weed, that's a weed, we probably shouldn't be so certain. God is a different kind of farmer than we will ever meet. God is like a teacher who cares more about who learns than who cheats. You know, that teacher who works patiently around a class of smart Alex just to attend to the struggling underachiever so that he or she might pass the test. What I'm trying to say is God loves goodness more than God hates evil. And the Lord of the harvest knows what she's doing. Yeah, evil, deception, negativity, lies, despair, they're always going to be there. They will continue to wrap themselves around these tall stalks of wheat, entangling and intertwining with those good pieces of wheat. And we probably shouldn't forget that each and every one of us is capable of sowing poisonous seed. But I say when the judgment of God comes, it will be full of surprises. Because God is more merciful and more strict and more knowing than any of us are. God's heart is larger than our heart. And all will be changed and all will be different at harvest time or judgment time. But one thing will remain. And that one thing is love. The love in which we have trusted and hoped and endured. We have to wait for that judgment. We have to wait patiently for that harvest. But when it comes and the field is cleared, don't be surprised to see the weeds bundled together and thrown into the fire of a baking oven that's baking the finest grains you've ever seen to make the best bread you've ever tasted was just maybe put on the table, the table where saints and scoundrels are dining together. Won't that be something? Yeah, won't that be something? Amen.
I'd invite you to join me in prayer as we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, don't let the weeds in your garden or in your life get the best of you, for you have all kinds of other goodnesses to grow. So be about the work of that goodness this week, with the blessing of God upon you. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast and thanks for your support of the ministries of St. Paul Lutheran Church. Our commitment to projects that lend hope to other people stretches across the country and around the world. We hope that in a good way you feel a part of that reach. Tune in next Thursday for another edition of the St. Paul Podcast.